Good morning, congregation. Just a quick announcement that on the our opening hymn, won't be him, uh, our intro hymn, won't be him 22, but 24 in our hymnal, hymn number 24 for our intro hymn. Thank you so much.
name of God, of his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Good morning, everybody. And a special welcome to the ones who have been celebrating birthdays. I know Batlele reached a wonderful age where we are promised three score and ten years. And that was a Monday. And then Kieran today and our sister Enrica uh, in the course of this week also reached a most significant age. So welcome to you and all others that are celebrating significant birthdays and anniversaries and all those who are visiting here from distant and near places. We pray that our time of gathering will be a tremendous blessing. Then I am delighted to hear that the Kusista Carnival has resumed. That's great. Father Marcus has been very excited and also Paris Council was all um, on fire with the news. I've never seen people so excited about Kusistas, but maybe I've just been away too long. Uh, it's wonderful to be back as you see some of my Khoisan roots have surfaced a bit more strongly in my complexion and um, I look forward to our time together. Our service, as Father Marcus explained, there's just two hymns that we have changed and that's why we have the hymnal. I also need to be present in Paul at about 5 to 12 because I'm preaching at a service there of Father Florence Anthony, who retires this month, and I've been invited to be the grace preach and celebrant. So I won't be at the door to say hello to you, but I will make up for that uh, in the week to come and following uh, days. Um, for our visitors, our service is found on page 104, and the collect is found in the pure leaflet as also the psalm, but we will refer to that as we go along. Praise the Lord! Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
So we pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. And as we are invited to confess our sins, hear these words of comfort, rend your hearts and not your garments, and return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And it is the steadfast love of our Creator that is our recourse. And as we confess our sins, we are mindful that there's nothing that you and I have done or said or our sins of omission that God is not willing to forgive. And so we confess. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The collect for this Sunday is found on the pew leaflet. And so we pray together. Genders, God, you give us all things in abundance. Help us to hold lightly the fading things of this earth so that we may grasp tightly the lasting things of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Hosea. A reading from Hosea. Utando luka yehova, kubantu bakhe abanobu kwenga. Oko usiraeli ebe mnenane, Ndam tanda, ndambiza unyana wam, ukuba apume e yiputa. Baba biza, kwaba kukona bemgayo ebusweni babo. Babingelela koba hai, bakumisela kwimifanekiso eklingweyo. Mnake, 
ndamfundisa u Ephraim ukuhamba ndabaphatha ngengalo zam abazanga noko ukuba ndabaphilisa ndabatsala ngezinkya zomuntu ngeentsontelo zothando kubo ndaba njengomnyinyisi wejokwe emihlathini yabo ndathandamisa ukumnika ukudla akayikubuyela ezweni laseyiphutha nguasiria ukumkani wakhe kuba abavumanga ukubuya ikhele liyakuyijikeleza imizwe yakhe liyigqibele imivalo yakhe liyidle ngenxa yamacebo abo abantu bam baphikelele ukubuya umva kumu nakuba bebizelwa phezu abaziphakamisi mvela ndingathini na ukukulahla Ephraim ndikunqame Israel ndingathini na ukukulahla njenga Adam ndikwenze ube njengetseboyini Inhliziyo yam iphethukile phakathi kwam ububele bam buvuthile kunye andiyi kukwenza ukuvutha komsindo wam andiyi kubuya ndimonakalise u Ephraim ngokuba ndinguthixo andi mtu ndingoyingcwele phakathi kwakho andizi ndishushu ngamsindo baya kumlandela uyehova uyakubhahula njengengonyama kuba yena uyakubhahula bavele enjonalanga onyana begupa baya kuvela eyiphutha begupa njengendaka bavele elizweni lase Assyria njengamavukuthu ndibabeke ezindlwini zabo utsho uyehova This is the word of the Lord Our choir, our morning choir is having a Sabbath break and so we will say the song and I invite the brothers in the house of the Lord this morning if we could say the first line and the sisters would respond with the second line and where there are more than second lines the men will just do the first and the women will do the rest. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And gather in from the lands. Some wandered in desert waste. hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He led them by a straight way. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love. For he satisfies the thirsty Let those who are wise pay attention to these things. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. A 
a reading from St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. As jylle dan saam met Christus opgewek is, soek die dinge daar boe, waar Christus is, en aan die rechterhand van God sit. Bedink die dinge, wat daar boe is, nie wat op die aarde is nie. Want jylle het gesterwe, en jylle lewe is saam met Christus verborge in God. Wanneer Christus, wat ons lewe is, geopenbaar word, dan sal jylle ook saam met hom in heerlijkheid geopenbaar word. Maak dood dan jylle lede wat op die aarde is, namelijk oorhererij, onreinheid, hartstog, slechte begeertes en gierigheid, wat afgoede diens is, waardeer die toren van God oor die kinders van die ongehoorzaamheid kom, waarin jylle ook vroeger gewandel het, toe jylle daarin geleef het. Maar nou moet jylle ook dit alles aflee, namelijk toren, woede, boosheid, laster, skannerlijke taal uit jylle mond. Lieg nie vir mekaar nie, omdat jylle die ouwe mens met sy werke afgelee het, en jylle met jylle nieuwe mens beklee het, wat vir nieuwe woord tot kennis, na die beeld van sy skepper, waar daar nie Griek en Jood, besnedene en onbesnedene, met innerlijke onverjammer, onbesnedene, barbaar, skiet, slaaf, vryman is nie, maar Christus is alles en in allemaal. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord according to Luke. Glory to Christ. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be judge and arbitrator over you? And he said to the crowd, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. 
And then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax and drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will, is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the gospel of Christ. speak in the name of God's beloved. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Seek the things that are above. And someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. And in his response, Jesus said, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. It was with a certain amount of astonishment and growing dismay and eventually disgust when I saw members of the governing party at their gathering in KwaZulu Natal self-identifying as Talibanists, wearing the red headscarf that the Talibans use within their daily uniform as they go about their deeds. Essentially misogynist in nature, essentially committed to the matters of human rights and the place of all before the law. And when we look at the text for today that we are reminded in Colossians that you have to look at the way you were and what we have evident in that gathering and in that uncontested appearance of these individuals, that they seem to be unmindful that as the party in power, that they are also representative of all South Africans. And in their conduct, in their domain of their political space, they should also be alert and sensitive, not to their own power, but who they represent in the electorate. This morning's reading in the gospel and the engagement that Jesus has with the man who calls from the crowd speaking out of, out of his own concern for his own wealth and his inheritance and the response that Jesus gives to him seems to suggest a foreknowledge on his part on this man's need for intervention because he says one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And that is something that you and I ought always to be cognizant of. What we have 
the source of our possessions, the history of accumulation, and what do we do with that? And when Jesus responds to this man, he tells him a parable of a rich man, the land of whose produced abundance. And what Christ is then speaking to is how you and I coexist, how we share, how we respond to the need of each other. And if we look at Colossians, the last verse that Harry read to us, it speaks to, do not lie to one another, do not deceive each other, seeing that you have stripped of the old self, everything that has brought us to this point in the history of our land and in our personal relationship to each other, strip yourself of all the practice of the past and clothe yourselves with a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. And so the, the divine is the true north star of our character and the essentials of our being. And in that renewal, there is no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all and in all. And so our engagement, when we look at the wealth of the land, it's the land that produces the wealth. It's not the rich man. And his response says, Jesus, he then has a conversation with himself. He has an abundance and the abundance for him has to be accumulated and stored for another further day of profit instead of looking at how he can distribute it amongst the poor of the land and the struggling worker and everybody within his circle of association. But what he does, he wishes to extend the boundary, build bigger bonds. And so the time come for profit, he is timely positioned to do that. And then he says to his soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years, relax, eat, drink, and be merry. The conversation is with self. The conversation is with perceived need and how it will be spent. Not in relaxation with others, but with himself. And that is a source of fear that many of us have in our land. It's when that which we have accumulated stands under threat are being taken away in a unnegotiated, in a spendthrift, in a violent manner. But part of our source of our fear is the self-dialogue, this preoccupation with self-interest. In my time on the Camino Compostelo, I've had to confront my own fears and my own demons. On the first day of leaving the southern uh, town of France, St. Jean, Peter Paul, within a half an hour on the Camino, I was lost. I had taken a wrong turning and I had walked 30 kil uh, minutes one way when I realized I'd come to a homestead and I had to find my way back on the route. And I wasn't sure that I was on the right track. And for four or five hours, I walked with the uncertainty, do I know where I'm going to? And eventually I did arrive just before nightfall at the albergue, the homestead that was set aside for pilgrims. And that same matter repeated itself the next morning because within 10 minutes, 
I was one of the few stragglers, and I found that there were people walking past me. When I looked at them, they seemed to be walking slow. But their slowness was still overtaking me. And eventually, after 45 minutes, I was alone, out of breath, and up the steep incline of the Pyrenees. And then a woman's voice drew my attention, and I heard her say, are you okay? And I looked at her, and she had a kind of metal strip out of Africa kit on. I said, I was kind of affronted. And I said, no, I'm fine. But she was not impressed with my response. And then she said, yeah, I have my walking pole. And I reluctantly took it. She said, I only need one. She had two. And having the support carried me further. But this lady, Joanne, I would later learn as her name, stayed with me for the rest of the day. We walked over the Pyrenees, and my breathlessness was not such a taxing thing. And eventually, we descended into the northwestern part of Spain. And for four consecutive days, she would be waiting for me to make sure that I had water and that I was not bereft of support. And that was my experience of this division. She was a North American. She was representative of so much in my conversation that I was uncomfortable with in terms of the job, a place in society. But all that fell away in the moment of her seeing my need physically as a human being First time on the Camino, she's done it two, twice already, and she, I was a beneficiary not only of her support, but of her knowledge. I benefited from her privilege, which she did not keep in reserve, but she enabled me to walk further along the way. Three weeks later, the third Sunday on the Camino, I was much fitter, much more able, and Joanne had gone on to Madrid to be present at a wedding of her daughter. And on the Sunday morning, I was caught at about 11 o'clock in a heavy thunderstorm. I was very fearful as I walked within this eucalyptus forest. And as I came out of it about two hours later into this village where I thought, should I look for a coffee spot and wait out the storm or should I go further and not knowing the distance to the town that I was going, the town of Villafranca, I decided to put on my waterproof poncho and just face the uncertainty. I was very anxious. And as I ascended this climb to this village, I saw, I uh, looked back further into the dark path of the forest and I saw a young fellow walking my way and within about 20 minutes he eventually caught up with me and there are moments when you meet a stranger, a fellow pilgrim, there's either a nod of the, of the head and buen camino, have a good pilgrimage and the person walks on or there's a pause. And there's a possibility of engagement. And in the case of this young man, it was the latter. And we walked out into the clearing, the rain had stopped, and we found that we had walked far above. We could see the clouds below. I don't know if you've ever been to the Valley of a Thousand Hills, but it has that kind of immensity of these rolling hills to the distance. But the the incline was much more steep, and we spoke. We spoke about the beauty of it. He was 25 years old. It's his first time on the Camino, and as we neared this village, because we could see it in the incline, I asked him, are you staying over? He said, no, he, he's not sure. He'll, he'll have to look for um, a, 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 
one of these dormitories called the albergi. <coughs> but he said, if I don't find a space, I'll just have, I'll sit down at the cafe and I will have a glass of wine. And I looked at this young guy and I thought, here's a lesson unfolding for me because even though I had a room and a bed, I wasn't sure if I was going to make the incline. And until he joined me, that was my fear. And I looked at his investment in the moment. Just a glass of red wine. If there's no accommodation, he will go on to the next town of Osebero, which was a 25 kilometers away. And so when we look at ourselves as we journey as individuals, as families, as communities, as fellow South Africans, and wherever our geography might be that we call home, it is the certainty of love of Christ. And sometimes Christ's presence is not necessarily within a fellow believer. Christ's presence might be in somebody who says, I do not believe in God, or I believe in Allah, or Yahweh, or Jah. But whatever is our path to the divine and the way we experience and the perceive the divine, it is for us first as individuals and particularly as Christians in this land of South Africa to recognize the presence of God and the way God compares compels us to embrace the certainty of the divine in our life and in that proceed in trust. As I have experienced and I have been the beneficiary of much wisdom and much generosity on this path that pilgrims had walked on for thousands of years. And I will be reflecting and much of that experience in the times ahead in the sermons that I will be preaching from this pulpit. But it is how we address our fears and how we claim the truth of our being. And so in conclusion, I want to share with you a poem by Marianne Williamson where she says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as you let your own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. What a joyous claim. But we are meant to be our true selves, brilliant, gorgeous, and fabulous and to engage our deepest fears, which we have already overcome when we open our eyes this morning and breathe the blessing of a new God-given day. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith as we say in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God.
all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So let us pray. For a while now, we have been praying for persons who are near and dear to us and to members of our cathedral family. And likewise, today we mention them by name, and I ask you just to ponder a while and ask God's healing presence in their lives. And so we pray for Paul Kutsia. As we also remember Joan Coulson, Walter and Hilary Leaning, for Johnny Aronson, for Margaret Salberg, and our sister Glenda Volskett and Evan Peterson. And so, Father, as we pray for your healing presence, the nourishing and overwhelming grace of your Spirit, which is holy and restorative, that it may be present in their lives and in the lives of those who care for them. And in this moment, may they feel the Eucharistic presence of your sacrament of love, of forgiveness, of sustenance. Lord, in your mercy. And as we pray for those who are frail in the flesh, struggling in spirit. We also give thanks for those whose lives are being celebrated in this week that has passed and in the week to come. We pray for a birthday celebrated by Bertlele Hapia, for Angie Titus, Kieran Hrupa and Hendrika Weinhardt. As we also pray for those present here and those who are with us via the live stream of this Eucharist service in all the ways that they celebrate the goodness of God in their lives. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we are also thankful for the gift of flowers adorning our church today. We thank you for the Flower Guild and the offering of love to welcome me back after a considerable number of Sundays of absence. Thank you for the creativity 
but most of, overall for the sign of generosity and of care and of welcome. And so we thank you for all others who have made us welcomed in this place, who have cleaned and prepared our gathering here as an act of worship. As we thank you for Gary this morning as he accompanies us on the organ. Lord, in your mercy. And Father, we pray for the bishops, and their spouse, assembled for the Lambeth gathering. We pray for Archbishop Justin, that he would be continued to be enabled to preside with wisdom in a discerning spirit. We thank you for the beauty of the gathering, flawed as it is with the omission of so much that speaks to our generosity as human beings. The way that members of our gay community is denied full inclusion. The men and women who are partners to gay bishops who have not been invited. We pray for those who have chose to boycott this occasion in protest, either for or against. And yet we also thank you for the men and the women who have stood up in solidarity, who have marched through the towns of Kent and Canterbury to signal their alliance in love for those whose fullness of humanity is not being celebrated in, their, in our acceptance of their gender diversity. But Lord, we praise you that in Christ we are one and that the violence of opinion, of exclusion, is not your final word on our place in your eyes. Lord, in your mercy. And so, Father, as we venture into this day, we pray for our President Tabo, for our President Cyril Ramaphosa, as we pray for our Premier, Alan Wendy, and our Mayor, our Mayor Jeffrey. Pray for the ones who, their families, those advise and care for them. We pray for each one of us in all the ways that we seek your presence and desire, wellness, and all that makes for joy in our lives. And we praise and thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, our brother. Amen. Friends, just one announcement from my side. Um, during my absence and after a period of scrutiny and discernment, the Cathedral Council and Wardens have appointed a new Vaja. You've seen him in action in various capacities on an interim basis and also in the altar and as a, as a lay minister but I'm pleased to now formally inform you that Gregory Kutsia is our new Vajra. And in the days to come, because we are Anglicans, we will do it ceremonially and with great uh, pomp and pageantry and with a bitchimiras kusistas when we uh, formally celebrate him. We just now need to get his garments in order. Uh, Eddie uh, Iso uh, has a big vestment to fill. So either we need to get a new tailor in or to make a brand new garment. And if you have any advice or any skill in that area, please do speak to me because we want to make it a, a wonderful occasion. 
And we thank you for those who have been welcoming uh, Gregory, and we also pray that he would continue to have and benefit from our wisdom, our, our counsel, but more especially our forming support. So Gregory, I'm not going to do anything much more beyond this, but we will talk to you in the days to come in consultation with the council and the wardens. And, uh, but it's good to have you with. And it's, it's, Gregory's appointment has got nothing to do with the fact that he's from Elsie's River. But uh, we are glad that he has got good roots also. Arthur, you want to say something? Gregory is telling me that Arthur wants to tell me something. Arthur, you may tell us something. Thank you. Good morning, friends. And Father Michael, uh, bon camino. <laughs> so welcome back. Um, it, it is wonderful to have you back in the pulpit up there. You've got your space there as usual. Thank you very much for coming back and joining us again. Um, I, I wish to... Um, just also thank Father Marcus for holding the fort, making sure that everything remains as <clears throat> we are. And, and how wonderful it is that Father Michael has always put a system in place where he can go away for six weeks and everything remains in place. Thank you, Father. Then, then, of course, the, there's the issue around your feet and your well-being. So there's a spa treatment coming. So you can either have a spa treatment, or you can have steak and chips, or you can have sushi. But there's a, a, a voucher for you, Father, so you can use it in, in any way you want to. And we also don't forget that Father Marcus has also had um, uh, lots of challenges, so he will be included in, in that in that little voucher as well. So thanks, guys. Thank you, Father. So Father, Father Marcus and I are going to a spa for a foot pedigree. What, what do you call it? That's very nice, Marcus. We walk hand in hand. On my third Sunday on the Camino, I was having uh, lunch, and there was a fellow that I befriended from Belgium, uh, Mark de Kaiser. And Mark the Kaiser, Father Neil Allen and I would always, we were like a little boys club walking together. And then a rather gorgeous young woman uh, sat down that we had met on the Camino and she said to me, um, uh, I understand you were Anglican priest. I said, yes. I said, yes. And where's your wife? I said, my wife was thinking about coming, but she reviewed it and she says, maybe next time. Oh, and so... What does she think about this arrangement? I said, what arrangement? No, your relationship with, with Mark, with Mark. So I said, no, she doesn't know about Mark, but it's not a, a relationship in the way that you are <laughs> suggesting. So you people, I seem to have a gay-friendly disposition. <laughs> On that word, when it is no deeply mulligate, please stand. And so, may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. for the offertory is not as is on the hymn, hymn sheet or on the pew leaflet but it's the only and it's the last change that we have the other hymns remains the same but this hymn is in the hymn book it's 198 198 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made. For us, it becomes the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks 
through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because today you have gathered us together at this Eucharistic feast so that we may be renewed in joy, love, and peace. And therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise you now and forever sing. Sivebao gen kanawako krestu in kosi yetu. Gai yam kelo umbulela no bongo esi vnikilayo. Kutumele umoya wako. Owingwele pezu kwetu na pezu kwezi zipo se son kene wai. Kono kuze zibe gumzimba nega zila ke kuti. Wati. Kobu suka avinin kelwa ngabo wa tabata isonka. Waza akubabula le kuwe wasikakeza wabanika bafundi bake esiti. Tabatani nitle, logunzi mawamu nikalelu wanina, oku kwenzele ni uku dikumbulu. Kananjala wemba kwe sitlo sango kutlwa tabata intebe. Waza akubabula le kuwe wabanika ya siti. Sela ni kuya nonke. Kuba elili gazi la mno ngopisho omcha. Alipa la lela nina na baninzi. Ukuze izona zikole elwe. Kama kwaasha onke anisi kubane sila kuyo. Oku kwenzele ni uku dikumbulo. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen, Christ, Christ, Christ will come again. The violence does say do it in obstan on all offer ons for e rebrot and e rebicker. Father ons thank you that ons vader gemaakt het om e tien woordigheid te staan en e te dien. Ons vraag e om e heilige geest op die offer van e heilige kerk neer te stuur for enig amal wat in die heilige geborg in die heilige deel neem, vervul hulle met die heilige geest en bevestig hulle geloof in die waarheid, so dat ons die saam mag geloof in u, die die dienaar Jesus Christus mag verheerlik, hulle eer en heerlikheid sê aan u, vader en sien, met die heilige geest en die heilige kerk, nou en verewe. Amen. And so as Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break, is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We remain in one body, for we all partake of the one bread.
We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same, Lord. It's always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, how to eat the flesh of your dear. We may evermore dwell in him and he in us. and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Be not even your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Be all who we are. Please join me in saying the Anama Christi and it's found on page 516 for those who have the prayer book. It's in the prayer book. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.